Oh good. Yay! We have more talks. Did you know that we're doing talks all day? It's true. Um, Rihanna's lovely. Um, I met Rihanna and Chris when we did a whole bunch of speaker training through Yao. And so there was 12 of us all in a room, all these um, up and coming women speakers. And we got to do an entire day's training with Damien Conway and that was awesome. Um, and it's like, yes, I would like love to invite you to submit to a thing. And it's like, yes, yeah, there's a talk. And it's like, yay. And so this is Rihanna doing a talk about mice and maps, which sounds really interesting. <laughs> so take it away. Thank you. All right, uh, so my name is Rihanna. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a talk on mice and maps. Uh, this is in regards to, this is my first pro, um, programming project that I ever did to solve a real problem that I was having at the time. Before this, I'd spent a few months doing tutorials, like through Treehouse. Uh, I had gone to a lot of meetups. I've done a lot of bits and pieces tutorials, how to do a blog, how to do a to-do list, that sort of thing. But this is the first time where I kind of struck out on my own and I tried to solve a real world pro, uh, you know, real life problem using programming. I'll, a bit of a disclaimer, this was done about three years ago. I haven't really touched the code since because shortly after that I, I, got, I got a job and I got very busy and I started a family and all those things, all those, lo all those lovely things. But I think, I, I think it is still, I think it still holds up. I think it's still quite a, quite a nice little project. I, I was actually really impressed looking back at it that I could actually read the JavaScript that I wrote three years ago. I was patting myself on the back there. I thought that was really, that, that, was, that was, yeah, go past me. So, so that's what I'm gonna be talking about today. Oops. Okay, so, the, so we'll start with the mice part of mice and maps. Uh, for those who, of you who aren't aware, there is a mouse guard role playing game. This is based off um, a comic with mouse guard, and it is really fun. So, about three years ago, my brother got me this system for, for Christmas, and I hadn't played before. I'd done lots of other role playing games before, but I hadn't played this particular system. So, I thought I'd give it a go, and I'd run this game. I'd get, I'd get together with some friends every couple of weeks, and we'd play mouse guard, and it would be really, really fun. If you haven't role played before, it does have kind of a bad, it does have a little bit of a bad rap sometimes, but it is really, really fun. It's a really, really social game. And when it comes right down to it, what it is, it's interactive storytelling. You're sitting there with, with people, you have your scenario, you have your world, and you play different roles, you play different characters, and you build a story together, you build a narrative together, and it is it's really, really fun. You get up to lots of cool stuff, and it's, yeah, it's really, really interactive. Now this is this is kind of what Mouse Guard is. Um, it's kind of if you think Lord of the Rings, but instead of elves and orcs and dwarfs, you have mice. So you're little mice, and you live in the forest, and you're dealing with snakes and weasels and spiders and all those all those scary things, and you're trying to go on epic quests like delivering the mail to the next town over and stuff like that. And it's it's a really really cute game. I, I really recommend it. Part of the problem I had, though, was that without reading the books first and without doing any of that, I didn't have a really intimate knowledge bank of all the towns, of all the characters. And unlike other role playing, which is like, ah, oh, slay the dragon and all that sort of stuff, it was really, really focused on all the characters' backstories. So where they were from, who their parents were, were their parents still alive, who were their friends, who were their enemies, who taught them how to sew, who taught them how to do this. It was really, really interactive and I was having a really hard time remembering all of it and keeping it all in my head from week to week. So these are some of my notes that I've written. Uh, other people who've made games, these are the kind of similar sort of notes and they were everywhere and there were crosses out of everything and there were so many times where I was running the game where I just had no idea what to do next, had no idea where we were. And it was just getting really, really confusing. So I had a look to see if there was a, a solution. And I, I couldn't really find one. But it was also around that time where I went to a Rails install fest. Uh, Reinteractive, who sent me here today, and who have been very nice, who I now work for, actually run the install fest. And just a note from the, from the keynote earlier, we actually have been working on improving our Windows support for install fest. So, yeah, so. <laughs> we, 
which I'll be, which I'll be testing soon because I'm pretty sure I'm the only person at work with a, with a Windows laptop. And yeah, so I went to one of these and I learned about Ruby because prior to this, I'd just done really static websites, so just HTML, CSS, a tiny, tiny bit of JavaScript, not much. And I went here, I learned about databases, I learned about all these different things, and I learned about Ruby on Rails and how it handles all that for you, and how at about the end of the day, most websites, most databases, most everything is just a blog. There are places where you put in information, there are ways to get it out, there are ways to put it in, there are ways to put it up there, you can have lots of different types of information, it all links to databases, and everything is kind of like a manipulation of that, adding things, taking things away, that sort of thing. So I thought, okay, um, this is kind of like a blog, this sort of stuff, where we're posting information about what people are doing, where they're going, what's, what's going on in the world. So I thought, okay, maybe I could build a blog on it. A lot of people who run these games can do these blogs really well. There are a lot out there. A lot of people set up Twitter accounts for their role-playing characters and stuff like that. It's not quite a how I think. This is kind of more how I think. Uh, this is a map of Mario, and I cross-stitched every stitch on that map because <laughs> I love maps. This is how I think. I think spatially. I have maps all around my house. I absolutely love them. So th this is how I think. And so I wanted my solution to include maps because Mouse Guard has a really cool map. Really, really nicely drawn. I love this sort of style. I love this sort of theme. So I thought I'll integrate this with my blog and then I'll have a way to track what's going on and then we'll, yeah, be able to have a really nice time. I'll be so organized, it'll be really good. So I thought, okay, let's have a look what sort of mapping things are out there. So I had a look, uh, there's Google Maps, obviously first thing that comes to mind. Uh, however, this is, I, I found it really closed. You could only use their maps. You could only use it for very limited things. So I ruled that out. And then later I found Leaflet.js. So this is an, open source JavaScript library for maps. And it is really, really lovely. So this is the one I picked. So I have my Ruby on Rails, I have my leaflet.js. Because it is just a JavaScript library, you can use it with whatever you want. I just happen to be learning Ruby on Rails, so that's why I chose that one. But it's a really, really beautiful library. It has fantastic documentation. I had done virtually no JavaScript up until this point, and I was able to work it out and I was able to get a map to work and to do what I wanted. And I was, yeah, really, really happy with their documentation, with their examples, it was so good. All right, so here's a little screenshot teaser of the final product, just to put everything into context. So we have the map up here. You got all your markers there, so I've added all these ones in manually, so they're all different spots that you can go. I've then added in all the names of the places, who lives there, pretty pictures, stuff like that. And you can zoom in on this map, you can move around, and you can go wherever you want, and you can have a look at all the things. You can add in new places, you can add in more information. And it's just a very, very nice interactive way of keeping track of all this information that I was having a lot of trouble keeping in my head and in a notebook. Okay, so this is, this is how it starts. So you ins this is just using leaflet, L, capital L is for leaflet, so we're just putting that into a variable that makes a new map. Every time there's map dot anything, it's just working on that map, so that's cool. Uh, the next thing I had to learn were about custom map tiles. So I didn't, I didn't really know this, I figured you'd just put your map in there and it would magically figure out how to do zooming and all that cool stuff which it does more or less. It, it does a lot of that stuff for you, which is really cool. But you have to first split your map into tiles. So I, I didn't know what that was. I had to get a little help with this, with this section. There are a few ways to do it. Uh, one way is just in Photoshop. You can just cut it into tiles if you like. Um, otherwise, there are programs that help you out doing it. Otherwise, all my code is up on GitHub, which I'll have a link to at the end, so feel free to steal it. But I'll show you what I mean by tiles. So the first layer, you just have your one map, and then you cut it into four, and that's your next layer. Then you cut it into four again, so into 16, that's your next layer, and you can keep going on like that forever. So obviously, it's a very manual task if you're gonna do it manually. So the program that I have is just a little Ruby program, and it just calculates the width and the height, and it cuts it, and it puts it into the right folders, and then the code just 
looks into that file and goes, yep, cool, that's all the right ones and all the right layers, and then it just figures all the rest out for you, which is really, really cool. So this is my map at zero, zero. And then, for, and then here it is at level one, so it's split into four. Um, and then these numbers are, rep then these numbers are also the file structure. So there's a file zero folder, zero which has a one, has a folder one that has a zero and a one. And so that was the first part, cutting, getting, getting the map ready, cutting it into the tile so I could put it into the leaflet so it would work out all the zooming and all that cool stuff. Now this is what it looked like after I'd done this. This is at zoom level zero, where it's kind of gone, okay, I don't really know what to do with this. This is a really tiny map. Normally with Leaflet and with Google, they're working with world size maps. They're really, really big. So you can zoom out a lot, you can zoom in a lot, and you never really run out of map. You just keep going around and around. But this is quite a small map, so I did have to do some customization from there in order to get it to work the way I wanted it to work. So this is what it looked like to start with. Didn't look much better when I zoomed down one. Uh, but when I got down to zoom level two, it, it started to look quite nice. That's, that, that's pretty workable. Uh, I ended up finding that zoom levels two, three, and four were, were really good. Anything kind of outside that was a bit bad. So I've just put in here, just min zoom two, max zoom four, and then it stops me from zooming in any closer than that or zooming out any closer than that. So it's, yeah, really, really straightforward, their API. Okay, uh, the next problem I had, so you would have seen at zoom level zero, they've kind of tiled it outwards like this. And so if I put a marker on the first map, I'm not gonna see it on the next one. And if I go left from right, I'm just gonna go forever and see this image tiled again and again and again and get really, really, really lost. So obviously on a big map, not a problem, but on this map, we didn't really want that. So I looked into the API again, and I found a couple of little functions that they had. I put them in, and then it made it work the way I wanted it to work. So when you tried to move too far left or move too far right or up and down, it just kind of bounced you back in. It's like, no, nah, you, can't, you can't go that way. There's nothing that way. So this is just a little shout out to their API. It was written really, really nicely. They've got pages and pages of this stuff of all these really nice functions that they've written to help you get the map behavior that, that you want. So it's, it's really well thought out, and it helped me a lot because I was so new. I had no idea what I was doing, and I was able to get it to behave in an unorthodox way for, for a map. It wasn't built to do this. It was built to do open street maps. So I've talked a bit about Leaflet. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Ruby. So Ruby on Rails is also open source. Anybody can use that, anybody can download it, which is great. Uh, just the one thing you have to be mindful of when you are setting up your project and when you are setting up the database is to include a longitude and latitude. So that was really the only thing I had to do different to a standard blogging or a standard anything else, was I had to have a couple of ones for longitude and latitude that accepted decimal numbers in it because they got really, really long. And the rest is all just stuff to do with the game. So the name of the place that it is, what type of place, who lives there, uh, what the party have done there, what sort of stuff have they gone up to. And I put in a little reputation, so if they've been a bit naughty, I can kind of decrease that and they can have a negative reputation. So next time when they go there, I can go, oh, it looks like last time you really annoyed the mayor of this town. <laughs> and they're not too happy to see you again. And so I could, really, really easily look at it and remember what they got up to last time. So then I had a bit of a think about how I wanted it to work. So when I had it up and open in front of me, how, what I wanted to be able to do. So one of the things I wanted to be able to do was I wanted to be able to click on the map, so I picked right click for this, and I wanted to go, hey, they went here, they did something cool here, I wanna open up a new form and I wanna type out what they did and I wanna save that so I can come back to it later. So that's the first thing I did. So again, we'll just have a little bit of a look. So this is just using their documentation and plugging in my own, plugging in my own values sort of thing. Uh, so whenever you right click on there, it finds out the longitude, it finds out the latitude, 
it puts a little red icon there. I'm not going to show the code for that. It's just, it's really basic, just putting in the, how big I wanted the icon to be. Then what it does is it hides all the old forms and it just shows the new form. So hiding and showing, turns out that's a lot of the JavaScript I do nowadays is also fancy hiding and showing, so yeah, it ties in quite well. And then what it does is, I've actually hidden none on the form because I didn't want it to be able to type in longitude and latitude. I thought that would be a bit silly. So I've hidden it there. So what the JavaScript does is when you right click, it finds the longitude and latitude that you've clicked on. It puts it into the form for you so you don't have to worry about it. And then you can type in your other fields, you can press save, and then it remembers where it was. So, oops, that hasn't loaded. This is supposed to be a slide. It was pretty much the same as the next one, but this is what the next part does. It's when you load it up, it does then kind of the opposite. It does the same but different, where when you load it up, when you click on a marker, it does, it does the same again. So it looks at all the places that you've been. It finds the longitude and latitude. It finds the name as well. So when you click on it, it comes up with the name, Lock Haven, or wherever your name is and it binds it to the pop-up. So without having to think about it, without having to do anything like that, it puts, it puts on all the right spots, all the longitude and latitude spots, it, it binds it to the form that's associated with them, and then when you click on it, it shows that particular form. The form's how they're set up. This took me a little while to, to do, but in the DOM, it generates all the forms. So if you've got 50 markers on there, it's generated 51 forms, the new form and all the 50, other 50 forms. And then most of the JavaScript, what it does is it hides, hides all of them, because you don't want to see all of them, but it's, it's ridiculous. And it just figures out the one that you want. So it's either going to show you the new form, or it's going to show you the form associated with the marker that you clicked on it. So that is what this one does. It figures out the form that you clicked on and it shows it to you and you can type into it and you can press update and then you can see what was currently written there and you can update that and save that as you want. Okay. So it does look like there's a little bit of a time for a really short demo. I am doing a longer demo today as part of the open source games one at 4.30, so if you want to see a proper demo, I'm going to go into the code, I'm going to comment stuff out, I'm going to write stuff in, and I'm going to show it, show people kind of how to break it and how it works, because that's what we do, and that's, that's what's fun. Um, so I'll just see if I can get this one up and running now, just to show you a bit about just kind of how it all looks. Um, Pretty sure this is hosted on Heroku. And then the images are all hosted on, so it might be a little slow, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's gonna work. Sorry about that. Oh, everything's frozen, okay. <laughs> but anyway, so come see my talk at the games one if you wanna see more and wanna see me writing all my JavaScript and going through that. And I'll just try and bring that up again, because, oh, that's. Okay, I'll put up my information at the end. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so that was my project. Do we have any questions while we're waiting for that to do anything? Um, <laughs> Thanks. Are there any questions? I do have free t-shirts here, really nice t-shirts for people who, are, who answer questions, so please take a t-shirt. Oh, okay. Thank if you. Wrong size, come find me. <laughs> uh, so, Leaflet, yep. um, how, like, what's, what, what's the sort of feature set? How far does it go? Why would you use that instead of other options? Like, what, did you hit any of, it, any of its limitations? Where is it? Is it, is it just that it's an easy one to use or is it that it's um, actually got a lot of depth that you didn't even need to hear? Mm -hmm. There is a lot of depth to it. It has a lot of options. I, those are very, those are several options out of a really long, really long list of options. One of the main things is that I couldn't find any other things. I've had a look and there's just, 
very, very little open source software that does this. This seems to be the main one. It was written up in a very friendly way and it could handle custom maps. A lot wanted you to use open source maps or Google Maps and then it just let you do things like draw lines on them and draw shapes on them, that sort of stuff. But this one actually let you create your own tiles, create your own maps and create your own custom events to, to link into those ones, so. We have another question. And you get a t-shirt. Oh, ah. Thank you. Um, my question is about the latitudes and longitudes that mm -hmm. you're storing. Um, uh, uh, what do they relate to? Uh, do they relate to Earth or are they kind of arbitrary <laughs> or, or are they from mouse land itself? Mm. Um, I'm not really sure. Leaflet kind of did all that stuff for me. When you have a look at them, because I do save them in, in a table, they're like 32.7 and 21.8 sort of thing. So I think they relate that zero's in the middle and then they kind of go out from there. I'm fairly sure, I'm fairly sure, but. Oops. In that case, how did you generate the latitudes and longitudes? Oh. Uh, exactly that with the JavaScript that I showed. When you, like Leaflet took care of all that for me. When you right clicked on it, it figured out what the latitude and longitude was. And then I put it into the input and then it saved it for me. So the next time when I loaded it up, it knew where it was, it knew where to put the marker. So it handled all that for me, which was really nice. How many more t-shirts do you have? I have about, I have quite a few in my bag. Um, they were quite heavy to bring through, <laughs> through the airport. We might only have time to say two more, so. Yep. Big throw. Big throw, Oh. I was just wondering, did you make this? Let's see my netball skills. Ah. <laughs> did you make this publicly? <laughs> facing or was it just for your own use? Uh, this is for my own use. I eventually wanted to make it public facing and put in so you could create a user and put in an account and you could save campaigns and you could have it change seasons and stuff like that. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get quite that far, but it is something that, that you could do. Um, my husband, after seeing me do this, has now is now generating one that, that is going to be, I think, a bit more public facing than this one. But this one is all online, so I'll put up the link to it in a minute. So you can go and you have a look. It does only have the one database though, so if you do go in there and, and troll and enter things, I will be able to see it. Because um, <laughs> everyone will be able to see it because it's just the one database. Uh, but yeah. One last question. Throw it up the front to make me run. You can throw it up the front. Throw. Sorry. <laughs> Wind resistance. Oh. Did you come across any good tools for creating your own fictional maps from scratch if somebody wants to design their own world? Um, I'm not much of a, of, of, of a cartographer, so no, unfortunately I didn't come across that. Uh, if you do want to do something like that, Google Maps actually had this really cool thing for a while that you could make their maps look like a medieval setting. So you could focus on something like around Europe and you could change like the skins of it and you could make it look really kind of funky and medieval. We actually had one, we have one of this of Melbourne and we blew it up. It's like two meters by two meters and it lives on a wall um, of, of Melbourne. So that's, yeah, that's probably one way, but I'm not, I'm not sure of any specific cartographer programs. Thank you so much for that talk. That was awesome. Thank you.